Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. <laughs> it is November 3rd, and um, this is the 3 p.m. watch from Jerusalem time. And this is the first um, thir Thursday of the month, and we this is our Aliyah watch. And I'm glad, so thankful that faithful Uli from Herrenhut, Germany, has taken the steering wheel on this and steered it so far. So, Uli, I'm going to turn it right on over to you. Yes, welcome, everybody. We say welcome to the States in North America, to Australia, to South Africa, to Europe. And it's great to have not just the nations, but even the continents together on this call. Israel, Esther from Israel and others. And I, I really believe that even though we are few, we represent, we, we carry a big mandate. We, we represent a lot of, of the nations and even the ends of the earth. And this is God's promise that he is going to gather his people from the ends of the earth and bring them back to his land and, uh, and shepherd them like, like a shepherd uh, blocks his sheep on the mountains of Israel. And we know the mountains of most of the mountains of Israel is really disputed territory. There is a huge battle going on in the spirit about these promises to be fulfilled. And our our job is is not to be uh, following the new the news uh, most accurately. Um, I'm not an Aliyah expert. I uh, haven't looked out for the exact numbers of new olim this season but i i want this group to to pray ahead of the news to be those who prepare the way who remove the stumbling blocks for the lord to to come and and to bring his people home so welcome everybody and we invite you uh king of israel lord of hosts to to be with us to be to be leading us in the spirit and we we open ourselves um, as vessels to receive uh, the burdens on your heart and to bring them utter them in prayer bring them back to you and uh, at the beginning I I would like Susan to play us the song that uh, some of us heard live here at the gathering in Hernhood uh, by the same musician, just uh, a decade older. As I understood, this was performed uh, in front of uh, a group of people that had actually made Aliyah right before. And I, had prepared a number of uh, up-to-date information and topics to pray into what I thought is um, is in the news or um, yeah, it's taking place right, right now and it's critical to pray into that. But I really feel a, a stop to come with the, with the list, with the news. And also none of the people that I had invited to speak on those issues for this call, um, like had had uh, re replied positively. And I, I really sense it's, it's not because uh, I was too short in notice or whatever, but because there's something uh, that the Lord wants to step into, uh, wants us to step into corporately. And I would like to, uh, to mute everyone and let's take um, let's take about five minutes to to pray in tongues and and listen what the Lord has for us in this hour and um, yeah so uh, I'm sorry for the people on the recording later on you can do just about the same we we will mute and pray in tongues and seek the Lord, the God of Israel, for what he wants to re release to, to this group on, on Zoom in this hour.
Well, let, I'll say amen at this point. And if there is something that that you you feel you want to share right now with us, an impression or anything that that you experienced, received uh, during this this time of corporate <laughs> prayer. Um, Feel free to unmute. Well, <clears throat> I'll pipe in. <laughs> um, the word I kept getting uh, in that time was the holiness of God. And um, I feel like praying that the Jewish people would have a new revelation of the holiness of God. And um, that the spirit of religion would be bound and God would lose a confrontation with the holiness of God that would break through the centuries of hardness of heart towards him and his true nature. That they would really come into a new hunger for the true nature of God. And um, I think the, the Lord is highlighting us as the Gentiles to do continue to pray for this Aliyah situation because I, I came across this verse this morning and I've never seen it before, but it's out of Jeremiah 31, um, 16. Thus says the Lord, refrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears for your work shall be rewarded, says the Lord, and they shall come back from the land of the enemy there is hope in your future says the lord that your children shall come back to their own border <clears throat> i've never seen that as a scripture for alia mm. but we call them back to their own border father that there is a new fresh hunger a release of the elijah anointing this is an elijah season coming up for the restoration of all things and, and father for the jews in the land we pray for a fresh encounter with the holiness of god mm. in jesus name mm. yes there are several scriptures where god's where god binds his holy name that he he will sanctify himself uh, before the nations he binds it to the process of aliyah to to that that he will not do this because of the superior moral state of the Jews, but he will do it to sanctify his name among, to glorify his name among the people. And I don't know whether it, the word is sanctify in, in English, but in German, it is heiligen. Um, he, will, he, will, he will sanctify or glorify his name and the, and the root word is, is uh, kadosh. Uh, mm. and um, yes and in in German when we pray uh, the, the Lord's prayer hallowed be thy name then this is this is the same as we pray the Lord's prayer hallowed be thy name we indirectly pray that through the gathering of the uh, of the Israelites into their land, the name of God would be hallowed, would be sanctified, glorified. And I had uh, anyone else? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I never saw this in this light before. I'm so excited. Uh, it's, I'm looking in two scriptures. One is Isaiah 43 and the other is Jeremiah 16, but it's the same thing, but two sides of the coin. And here it says in verse three, for I am Yahweh, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I just sense his passion that they would know this and that who he is. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for in your place. Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored and I have loved you. Therefore, I will give men for you and people for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, 
give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. And uh, Father, I just sense this is all part of you bringing your final harvest home and you bringing to fulfillment this glorious plan of the restoration, the redemption, not only of your land, but of your people to the land and the revelation that you are the holy God of Israel. This is who you want to be known as. And one Psalm you speak about when uh, the nations see you do good for your people, in your land, then they will fear your name. So, Father, I thank you that this is all part of your plan of a revelation, not only for your Jewish people to know you, but for the nations to recognize you as well. And then there's the passage also in Jeremiah 16 um, that the Lord says, Behold, the days are coming says Yahweh that it shall no more be said Yahweh lives who brought up the children of Israel from the land of Egypt but Yahweh lives who brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands where he had driven them for I will bring them back to their land which I gave to their fathers behold I will send for many fishermen says Yahweh they shall fish them and afterwards I will send for many hunters and they shall hunt them from every mountain and every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. And for my eyes are on all their ways. They are not hidden from my face, nor is their iniquity hidden from my eyes. And he says he will repay double. And Heavenly Father, we cry out to you, the Holy One, for your mercy. And for whatever you need to do in this process of bringing back your people, whether by the fishermen or if we've come to the time of the hunters now with the boundaries that have been set by Russia. Lord, you know, but in this process, even if it is a stern mercy to bring deep repentance, that as many of your Jewish people would recognize you are their holy God. And they would have to leave behind their idols, their immorality. My people, I want to repent of this, Father, and say in your um, holiness, in your judgments, in your fulfillment of your word, remember your mercy. We cry out to you in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. Can you still... Uh... Uh, tell us again the references the you you yes sorry. put it in the chat yeah the first one was isaiah 43 um three to six and the second one was in jeremiah 16 14 to um 17 i didn't want to go on too long but it, he speaks about um, I will repay double for their iniquity and their sin because they have defiled my land. They filled my inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable idols. And so, Father, I just have a sense in this hour you're going to do a purging, a cleansing, a purifying, not only of your land, but of your people. And we ask for your mercy, even as Karen was saying last night, that with Netanyahu in office, often this process of alia is not as forthcoming as it um, is with other groups. So, Lord, we pray for your realignment to whatever needs to happen for the fulfillment of your will in this hour. In Yeshua's precious name. Amen. Yeah. Um, uh, Molly, you, you go ahead and then I ask Rhoda. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, I, when you asked, uh, when we were praying, I saw eagle. I saw a huge eagle and eagle wings. And, um, and I just referred to check where the eagle wings is uh, because God says, and in Exodus 19, verse 3, when they were camping, the children of Israel, uh, after they had come out of Egypt, and near Mount Sinai, Moses went up to God and the Lord called him from the mountain saying, 
Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I lifted you up on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. I see that the, that the Lord is doing the same thing. He is bringing them back in a way to himself. God is bringing them back to himself, not just restoring the land. So that is what we've been praying for, that the Aliyah is to the land, but more to his heart. So I just feel to declare that. Um, now, therefore, Lord, um, he says, therefore, if you will faithfully obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my special possession out of all the nations, for all the earth is mine, and you will be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So, Father, mm -hmm. we just want to declare what you have done for your children. As you brought them out of the first exodus, you're now bringing them back again to yourself. And now, Father, we pray that they will be as the one new man in as a kingdom of priests and a, and a holy nation and a people who have been chosen by you in this hour. So, Father, we just agree with this word and declare your will be done on earth and on Israel as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. I really sense the fear of the Lord as um, um, as He's highlighting His holiness in and the the call to holiness to to separate um, even and the the call to consecration and there's a scripture I received ahead of this call that I didn't know how how that would really fit in but but it is uh, what you what you all shared is such a confirmation and i'd ask i'd, I'd like to ask rhoda to read out uh chapter 24 of the book of jeremiah for us Yeah, well, yeah, I don't know if you saw that, but Karen Sand is on too. Yes, I, 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 I wrote to her. Thank you. Jeremiah 24. Yahweh gave me a vision. Placed in front of the temple of Yahweh stood two basket of, baskets of figs. This was after Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had led away Jeconiah, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into exile from Jerusalem with all the nobles of Judah and the blacksmiths and metal workers and had taken them to Babylon. One basket contained excellent figs like those that ripened first. The other contained very bad figs, so bad they were uneatable. Yahweh said to me, what do you see, Jeremiah? Figs, I answered, the good ones excellent, the bad ones very bad, so bad as to be uneatable. Then the word of Yahweh was addressed to me. Yahweh, the God of Israel, says this, As these figs are good, so I mean to concern myself with the welfare of the exiles of Judah, whom I have sent from this place to the land of the Chaldeans. My eyes will watch over them for their good, to bring them back to this land, to build them up and not to break them down, to plant them and not to tear them up. I will give them a heart to acknowledge that I am Yahweh. They shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they will return to me with all their heart. As for the bad figs, the figs so bad as to be uneatable. Yes, Yahweh says this, that is how I will treat Zedekiah, king of Judah, his nobles and the remnant of Jerusalem, those who have stayed in this land as also those living in the land of Egypt. I will make them an object of horror to all the kingdoms of the earth, a thing of shame, a byword, a laughing stock. A curse in every place where I shall disperse them. Sword, famine, and plague I will send against them until they have vanished from the soil I gave to them and to their ancestors. 
May God bless the reading of his word. Amen. Well, I don't feel called to, to identify the bad figs by name to prophesy against any, any individual person or names or leaders. Um, but I, in, this, in this chapter, I again sense this sense of, of a call to holiness and, and the Lord himself will, will divide between the good figs and the bad figs as, um, as there, there were two baskets of, of figs, uh, one very good fig, uh, good figs and one with very bad figs. And I think uh, the Lord knows who is in which basket. Uh, and, and for us, it is not to, to, the, to divide a pile of figs to the, to the two baskets, but to pray uh, his word to come, yeah, uh, or re reality to come into alliance with his word, alignment with his word, that he will deal with, with the bad figs. And, and this is not just uh, that he prevents the bad figs from returning to the land, but it, it even addresses those leaders, those kings who already are in the land, who have settled or who have chosen a place of uh, material security as uh, Egypt stands for, a place where they, they feel comfortable enough and can provide for themselves and are independent of, of the Lord's, Lord's mercy. And the Lord, it is not our curse, but the Lord says, I will deliver them to travel into all the kingdoms of the earth for their harm, to be a reproach and a byword, a taunt and a curse in all places where I shall drive them. And I will send this word, the famine and the pestilence among them, Till they are consumed from the land that I gave to them and their fathers, and and our our battle is not uh, is not against flesh and blood. We are called to bless and not to curse, but we call upon the Lord of vengeance to to fight his battles and to reproach the principalities and and even the even the instruments in the in the hand of the enemy that uh, that stand against the lord whether in israel or, or in the diaspora so that the land will not be defiled anymore and that there will be room for for the remnant to to come and settle that the land will be cleansed and i I really speak these words, pray these words with, with fear and trembling. Mm. Mm. What is that scripture, dear Uli? The one with the fig trees? That was the whole chapter of Jeremiah 24. Okay. Thank you. In our Israeli watch on Monday, there was we had a whole section that we prayed about Aliyah, um, and one of the, the th themes that came out was the fact that there are so many people in the in the West, especially, who are so comfortable that they don't actually want to uproot themselves and go back to Israel. And there was one prayer that uh, was saying that. Um, uh, where is it? Let the Jewish parents become more concerned for the future of their children and grandchildren than they are f for their often too way too comfortable lifestyle in the captivity. So that was one of our prayers there. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> I think for me, uh, the sense of holiness is um, changing my perspective of Aliyah 
today. And Father, I just repent um, of knowing that Aliyah is an important thing, part of your plan and an important call to the Jewish people. But I had not seen it as a holy call until this morning. And I pray, Father, that we would apprehend this call to Aliyah is not just a good idea and not just part of your plan, but it is part of your preparation for your return. Yeah. I pray, Father, for a spirit of wisdom and revelation on this shift this morning that goes across the boundaries of our nations. Forgive us as Gentiles who have come uh, thinking that we're in we're right in feeling like Aliyah is good. Um, I pray, Father, for now a new encounter, a fresh encounter with the Holy God on this whole issue. In Jesus' name. Yeah, if I could just step in for a minute too. Joe, I hear what you're saying from that call on Monday, but Here's another perspective. I have a close friend who grew up in a gated community in Bolivia. So she's Jewish. Uh, I think her family came out of Poland originally, but these are very wealthy people, um, very secure in the land. But when they catch the vision of Alia back to the land, um, I asked her had any of the families made that decision? And she said, yeah, a close neighbor of hers had gone home. Um, so they weren't there very long before her husband was called back into the reserve and then both of her sons were called into the IDF and she sat at home alone, terrified for what was happening to her husband and her children. Um, and they made the decision to move back to Bolivia. So I, I think we have to understand, I mean, maybe you could speak into this too, Esther. What I'm hearing from him this morning is the deeper level of Alia, which is ascension. And there has to be a vision in our hearts that goes way beyond returning to the land. Mm -hmm. it's, it's returning to, um, to a lifestyle with Almighty God that, that may involve losing their lives. I mean, it, we make these decisions spiritually right now, I mean, in the West, because we're not seeing yet the level of persecution. But those who are faced with it, it's a very different thing. And I, I'm realizing in my relationship with, with my friend that the jealousy is coming because she's watching my life and she's saying in the midst of the chaos that's happening, in the midst of the laws changing within our nation and, and uh, the church you know, staggering around, how are you staying how are you maintaining joy hannah how are you excited about kingdom where is this coming from and so i believe there's a there's an ascension he's calling on in us alia is coming around higher every time in the cycles right esther what this is about is is his way of moving us it's a come up here call come up here so when we come up there our lives witness something that's so much higher it's on a very different spiritual plane. And I pray that gets loosed over, especially, I mean, my city, um, we don't have a gated Jewish community, but we, we do have a, a separated Jewish community. It's a, it's a very um, affluent area of the city, as it is in many, many Western um, cities that the, the Jewish people have stayed together um, they're very, very affluent, very prestigious in the city, and they, they are mostly secular. They are not at all interested in the land. They're not at all interested really now in God. And my heart is, how do we soften? How do we bring a jealousy into their lives um, on a very, very different order than come home and put your kids into the IDF? Is that the most the church can offer them? Is, is this what we do as brethren as we say to them, you know, it's really important. And they're going for you that we wrap up this story that you, that you, you know, you bring Jesus home because you brought us back to the land and we pay the cost. What, what are you, what are you saying to us in terms of vision? What, what are you saying this is really all about? And until we ascend, 
we truly ascend into the spirit, into those heavenly places and understand the fullness that there is a reason to live and die for. There's something so much higher. And uh, God, I just want to say this morning, Father, I reach out to you, Abba, and ask you that we exemplify a lifestyle and a vision that is so exciting. It's so passionate, but it's so filled with purpose and meaning that the jealousy becomes a real and living thing throughout the nations, Lord. That they desire that vision in a world that's losing vision, losing hope, losing purpose. And that they understand, yes, that it may cost them their lives just as it may cost ours as this progresses. And it's a decision we need to make. But when it's based in truth, it's easier and easy to say yes to him. So, Father, let true Alia move in our lives let this holiness movement that we started with today. And I'm so thankful, Uli, that you said, let's just take time to get quiet before him and hear his heart in this. I think he wants to go so much deeper in this. Thank you, Father. Amy? Yeah, but uh, I was looking at uh, the prophetic significance of Exodus. Because that word Hebrew, the word Hebrew, where it's referred to at Abraham in Genesis 14, 13, then one who had escaped came and told Abram the Hebrew, and that word comes from a bar, which means one who's crossed over. And uh, from they left the land of bondage, they crossed over into the land of enlightenment. They were getting ready to meet a holy God in a betrothal ceremony at Mount Sinai. And that revelation is what God is wanting to redeem us from, uh, religion and religiosity, and the Jewish people from rabbinic Judaism or secularism, whatever bondage they're in, to engaging in a relationship with a holy God, but one who revealed himself to Moses as a God full of grace, full of compassion, full of goodness. That was his glory, and he's wanting to reclothe them in his glory, just as they were in the garden. They were naked, but it says that they, were, they had glory clothes on because they were in relationship with him. And so, Father, I just want to ask that you would bring revelation to us as your church that that revelation, just like it says in 2 Peter 1.19, it is a light shining in a dark place. And that, that revelation in our lives will be what is manifested to the Jewish people to cause them to hunger for that revelation of who you are, a great and mighty God who with an outstretched arm brought them out of the land of Egypt. That picture is a picture of you now. You are going to be bringing them out of the land of bondage into relationship with you because where the spirit of the Lord is, that is where liberty is. That is where revelation is. That is where your power is and love for them poured out. That's what Calvary uh, the whole Mount Moriah symbolizes is a picture of that you actually did what you said you were going to do. You were going to send a redeemer and a, and a Messiah. And so I thank you, God, for what you're doing. You're revealing that even now to mm -hmm. the Jewish people, but to us as your church so that we can walk in revelation. And that that's what's going to stir them up and cause them the thirst after you. And so I just ask these things in Jesus' name. I'd like to call out Susan Rao to, to, read, uh, to read aloud from Ezekiel 20, the last 11 verses, starting verse 33 to 44. It's actually the whole chapter, uh, the whole chapter 20 that, that carries this theme, but but we we will for time reasons uh, read just the end of the chapter. But but if you want to take that into your your private prayer time, uh, as as we pray for this for this aspect of.
the holiness of the God of Israel in respect to the holiness of Aliyah. So verses 33 through 44. Yes. As I live, says the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm and with fury poured out, I will rule over you. I will bring you out from the peoples and gather you out of the countries where you are scattered with a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm, with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the peoples, and there I will plead my case with you face to face. Just as I pleaded my case with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so I will plead my case with you, says the Lord God. I will make you pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant." I will purge the rebels from among you and those who transgress against me. I will bring them out of the country where they dwell, but they shall not enter the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord. As for you, O house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, go serve every one of you his idols. And hereafter, if you will not obey me, but profane my holy name, no, um, no more with your gifts and your idols. For on my holy mountain, on the mountain height of Israel, says the Lord God, there, there all the house of Israel, all of them in the land shall serve me. There I will accept them and there I will require your offerings and the first fruits of your sacrifices together with all your holy things. I will accept you as a sweet aroma. Then I bring you out from the peoples and gather you out of the countries where you have been scattered, and I will be hallowed in, um, in you before the Gentiles. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I bring you into the land of Israel, into the country for which I raised my hand in, I and, an, and an oath to give to your fathers. And there you shall remember your ways and all your doings with what you were, uh, with which you were defiled, and you shall clothe yourselves in your own in your own sight because of all the evils that you have committed. I then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have dealt with you for my name's sake, not according to your wicked ways, nor according to your corrupt doings, O house of Israel, says the Lord God. Larry, go ahead. So I was praying. It's on my heart that because I I didn't have a handle on Aliyah coming into this. And I but I joined to see because there is a great need. And and as there was okay, the great evils in Syria, in in Ukraine, and uh that goes back to Germany and mm -hmm. the uh the Holocaust. And that's so it has to as my heart, but the holiness of God and the and the word is and that that is happening now today in israel the messianic jews still rejected but they say blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord the lord is holy he is doing his mighty work and and and, and as it as as jesus declared to the to the jews that persecuted him and they say um in uh in the gospels i was and i i, I didn't find the passage i mean it's it wouldn't be hard to find but um but you will no longer call for me uh uh or uh you you will know uh let's see that blessed is he who comes uh uh blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord and i'll, I'll look for it that that's the message and to be holy and that it's not just it's not just aliyah as we've been praying and in in the elijah's highway is to bring back his people who know the Lord God Almighty, and there are people there, and He's raising them up, and that's the that's the, the message. And 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 I've been blessed to meet a Holocaust survivor who despaired of life, saw God unfaithful, and now she seeks to share about the Holocaust and and to bring world peace from going from great despair to this, 
and I pray that she come to know the Lord. It was on Frank's stepsister, um, and uh, Eva Schloss. That's the message. If you don't know the Lord, then what's the point? Okay. But he's Thank faithful. You. Yes. And so sure. I'd like to pray into that. All right. Holy Father, we pray that, Lord, for Israel and for the people that they they come, they, that you open their eyes to see and and and, and have the jealousy of for the Lord, even as, as some have already, even though they're rejected by their own people in their own country. And, and mm. you say, as people come, they will be jealous of a people that are not a nation. And we rejoice in that work that you are doing and pray to complete it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I would like to take the last 10 minutes of our hour together. And uh, Hillary, I have seen your uh, hand sign. And if it's okay with you, I would like you to close us off in prayer and then share what you have on your heart um, in, in, in concluding the call, right? And in the meantime, yeah. I, would, I would ask Karen, you, you raised your hand before. Yeah. We have, we have, been, we have been informed and praying for, for the uh, tr boat trip or ship cruise on, from Holland to Norway, if I remember that correctly. And as I understood, um, you shared already on the Scandinavian watch, um, but asked for this not to be recorded. And I just want to give you opportunity to share shortly um, how this trip, um, yeah, what, what you received on that trip uh, about preparing Aliyah highways. Yeah, um, yeah, basically what uh, even beginning this spring uh, that led us to this uh, boat trip uh, is the Aliyah. Um, and and, and, and uh, one of the things the Lord showed us uh, while uh, we were on the Karen, boat. Karen, yeah. Karen, would, yeah. you, would you want this to be included in the recording or should we stop the recording here? Yeah, stop the recording. Thank you.